Why Ephesians? Well, partly because it is such a central and remarkable book, but partly also because the message of Ephesians is a message which will equip you to be God's people for tomorrow's world in some very specific and exciting ways which we are going to need. You need to be light on your feet and prepared to take a fresh look at Scripture, a fresh read of what God is saying to the world through Scripture in order to be people who can breathe that out in new ways into God's world for tomorrow's world. What do I mean? Well, chapter 1, verse 10 is a verse which actually the church in the Western world has studiously ignored. Please do not you ignore it, because Paul says in verse 10 that God's plan for the fullness of time was to gather up all things in Christ, things in heaven and things on earth. We have lived in a culture which has separated heaven and earth, which thinks of heaven as somewhere up there, a long way away, somewhere that maybe we'll go to one day, but it's not really got much to do with who we are down here. We didn't get that from the Bible, we got it from the Western philosophical and intellectual tradition, which 200 years ago conveniently decided that we would kick God and his heaven upstairs out of sight so that we could run the world the way we wanted down here. And we have seen not only the world, but also, heaven help us, God, Jesus, the Bible, ourselves as praying Christians, in the light of that. And we have lived split-level lives, and we have got a split-level eschatology about where we will go after death. We will leave this world and go to heaven. But actually, the Bible puts it back the other way around. The last great scene in the Bible is not about people being taken away from earth to go to heaven. It is about the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven to earth so that God's world will be one. And the good news is that in Jesus Christ, that has already happened. In Jesus, the twin halves of God's good creation have already been joined and joined once and for all and forever. And we as followers of Jesus Christ are called to live already in a world in which heaven and earth have come together once and for all. It may not look like that when you read the newspapers, when you see what's on the television. Often you say, if this is what heaven on earth looks like, then something has gone bad wrong and that's true but through the power of Jesus Christ in the strength of his spirit we are enabled to be people through whom what Jesus launched can actually become a reality we are to be people as that first chapter goes on through whom the power which raised Jesus from the dead will be at work so that signs and elements of that heaven and earth reality will come to birth in our midst many of us have grown up and I certainly grew up in a world in a church which simply didn't look at it like that, where heaven, as I say, was a long way away, and we just had to muddle along on earth as best we could and hope to get to heaven one day. We have been robbed of a central bit of our inheritance. Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come on earth as in heaven. And Jesus launched that heaven and earth project, and it's not going away until one day it is fully completed when God's work is fully done. Paul says, we are what God has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life that God has given us many, many gifts and that the good works which we are to do are not simply the moral behavior which is important, but it's much bigger than that. God wants us to be fruitful. God wants us to be experimental. God wants us to be innovative. God wants us to be his poem in and for the world. Artists, musicians, poets, dancers among you, this is your chance. Faithful to his calling, cheerful in his service, and fruitful for his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and through you with all those to whom he sends you, now and always. Amen.